Welcome back. The objectives of this video is to introduce the law of cosines and apply the law of cosines to the side 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 and the side angle side possibilities. We'll also do an application problem with the law of cosines. We can use the law of cosines to solve an oblique triangle but we need to know at least one side and two other parts. So in order to solve an oblique triangle, we need to know at least one side and two other parts. So if we have angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, or side, side, angle, we'll use the law of sines as we've seen in previous videos. But if we have three sides and no angles, or two sides and an included angle, we'll use the law of cosines. So if we know sides A, B, and C, and that's all we know, law of cosines, or if we know side C, pardon me, angle C, and side A and side B, so we have side, angle, side, we will use the law of cosines. So what is the law of cosines? Well, there's a couple different formats for the law of cosines and they're written in this particular form. So we have a squared, our side squared equals our another side squared plus another side squared minus 2bc cosine of a. So we've got the three different forms depending on which angle we have, right? If we have angle a or angle b or angle c, we'll use that particular format. And then the alternative form, maybe if we're solving for our for, for A or solving for B or solving for C, we'll use the alternative so, form. So if we're going to solve for a side, we'll use the standard form. And if we're going to solve for an angle, we'll use the alternative form. A couple things that I noticed about these formats, though. And they'll, they'll be pretty easy to memorize, and I'll ask you to, to memorize them, especially the standard form. really expect you to memorize the standard form. I notice that the side squared equals the cosine of the opposite angle, meaning this kind of information here. If I have a squared, I also have the cosine of a. Right, b squared cosine of b, c squared cosine of c. Okay, I also notice this looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it's not quite the Pythagorean theorem, but it starts with, you know, side squared. So if one side is b, then the uh, then I have a squared plus c squared. So that looks a lot like the Pythagorean theorem to me. And then finally, the third thing that I notice is. Here where I have a squared plus b squared, I also have a b. So if I have a squared plus c squared, I have a c. If I have b squared plus c squared, I'm multiplying minus 2bc. So these, these become easier for me to memorize if I think, well, the, you know, if I'm solving for side a, then I'm going to do the cosine of a. It looks like the Pythagorean theorem. And then since I have b squared c squared minus 2bc. So I can put it all together that way. So that's kind of how I memorize that. So let's take a look at our second objective here. We want to find three angles of the triangle shown in this figure. So we were given all three sides. So we have side, side, side. So we are going to do the law of cosine. And our process here, and this will be good to note, is begin by finding the angle opposite the longest side. So since side B is my longest side, I'm going to calculate angle B. So I'm going to use one of the alternate forms here. I'm not solving for the side, I'm solving for the angle. So using one of my alternate forms, look at my notes, cosine of B equals A squared plus C squared minus b squared all over 
2ac. And those are memorizable too, but the cosine of b equals a squared, which is 8. 8 squared plus c squared is 14 squared minus b squared is 19 squared all over 2ac or 2 times 8 times 14. This really is in calculator ready form. Uh, I'm trying to find an angle. I've got a ratio here, so I'll do the arc cosine of b equals, I'll do my double parentheses, 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 19 squared, that's my numerator, all divided by 2 times 8 times 14. So I put all that in my calculator. Watch your parentheses. I didn't have to solve for any of this in my head. I get the arc cosine. I'm in degree mode. Input all that, and I get 116.8 degrees. So angle B equals 116.8. So now that I know that's 116.8, I can go back and I can use the law of sines to finish this off. Because the law of sines sometimes is a little bit easier to do. So take your pick of which angle you want to find. I'm going to find angle C first of all. So the sine of C over 14 equals the sine of 116.8 over 19. Multiply both sides by 14. And sine of angle C equals 14 sine of 116.8 all over 19. I put all that into my calculator, the arc sine of 14 sine of 116.8 all over 19, and I get 41.1 degrees. So angle C equals 41.1, and angle A will equal 180 minus the 41.1 minus the 116.8 gives me an angle of 22.1. And does that make sense? 22.1, 41.1, and it does. Follows my large angle, large side, small angle, small side, medium angle, medium side. Our third objective here is to solve a triangle given a side, an included angle, and another side. So two sides and an included angle. I've got side, angle, side. We'll begin by calculating the side opposite the angle given. So in this case, we will use our standard form because we're solving for a side. So we'll solve for A. So A squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc, right? These are going to be the same. And cosine of angle A. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So 9 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 9 times 12 cosine 25. But I don't want a squared, I want a. So if I take the square root of all of that, I will have a. So a equals the square root of all this. So I can put all of this into my calculator the way it stands. So I'll start by using the square root. So I do second square root and then parentheses. So I'm going to put all that information in parentheses underneath the square root bar. So notice I didn't solve for anything, I just put it all under the square root. The quantity of 9 squared plus 12 squared minus all of 2 times 9 times 12 cosine of 25. And I get 5.4. So A, side A, is 5.4. Now that we know side A is 5.4, let's go ahead and solve for our 
next smallest angle will solve for angle B using the law of sines. So the sine of B over 9 equals the sine of 25 over 5.4. And that was 5.41, so we'll use that a little bit more precise. Multiplying both sides by 9, we get the sine of B equals 9 times the sine of 25 all over 5.41, so that's calculator ready. So the arc sine of B equals all of that. So putting that into our calculator, the arc sine of B equals all that, we get 44.66, we'll call it 44.7 for angle B. So angle B is 44.7. And doing some quick arithmetic, 180 minus 44.7 minus 25, we get 110.34 for angle C. And that seems to make sense. Our small angle creates our small side, our medium angle, our medium side, and our large angle, our large side. And then objective four, we've got an application problem here. The pitcher's mound on a softball field is 43 feet from home plate. The distance between the bases is 60 feet. The pitcher's mound is not halfway between home plate and second base. How far is the pitcher's mound from first base? So our unknown here is H. We have side, angle, side. We want to solve for a side. so. We are going to use our standard form and the law of cosines. h squared, the length of the side that we want, equals 43 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 43 times 60 times the cosine of 45. We don't want h squared, we just want h. So we're going to take the square root of all that, which will give us h. Put it all in my calculator underneath the radical, that entire quantity, the square root of all that. We hit enter and we get 42.43. So we know it is 42.43 feet or about 42 and a half feet, 42.4 feet from the pitcher's mound to first base. So this triangle is not quite a 45, 45, 90. That's not going to be a right angle. Uh, so there's our length for H. So there's your introduction to the law of cosines and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.